as I was thinking through what I wanted to talk about today, uh, I started thinking through my own church membership journey. I first became a church member at First Baptist Church, Brookhaven, Mississippi, when I was 16 years old. Um, night that I asked Christ to come into my life. And to be honest, at that time, did I have any clue what church membership meant? No. It was a Christian club, as far as I knew. You know, did I have any clue kind of what church membership meant at all? No, I did not. I think, you know, I think most folks in here know if you look in the Bible, you're going to see church membership listed. You know, you have to walk down the aisle and do this, that, and the other. No, it's not there. Is it pretty clear that we should be a part of a body of believers? Also, yes. Here, a couple of three years ago, um, me and Steve and Drew were meeting and we were talking about, you know, kind of church membership. Looked at what our church constitution uh, says, and if anybody would like to see a copy of the constitution, we can get you a copy of it. But as we were looking at kind of what did, what are kind of the requirements to being a member and expectations of being a member. So the requirements of membership, you know, or the, uh, I think the way we phrase it here is the life components for becoming a church member are really what you would expect from a Christian church. That is that you need to have accepted Jesus as your Savior. You know, pretty clear if you're joining a Christian church, you probably need to be a Christian. Um, you know, you probably a good idea if you'd actually made that, that choice. The other uh, two are, you know, that you accept that the Bible is God's inspired word. You know, we're a Bible teaching church, um, and that is, you know, one of the requirements of being a member here. Um, and then lastly is that you either have been or you intend to be baptized after you've come to Christ. So, you know, there are some churches that do infant baptism. That's not a, a baptism uh, from a biblical standpoint. Um, and uh, it, you, you have to be baptized or intend to be baptized after coming to Christ. That's requirements. Pretty simple. When you get into the expectations, so the expectations of membership, what I'd like to say is they are two-way. You know, yes, there's an expectation for you as a member. There's also expectations from us as a church or church leadership towards you as a member. One of our expectations is that you as a member would... Uh, be committed to growing closer to Jesus. That you are committed to actually growing spiritually and not just stagnating. Yeah, this is not fire insurance. You know, you know, church membership is not fire insurance either. But you know, it, it's a matter of you know, are you committing to actually grow spiritually? But as much as you are committing to do that, we are committing to help you do that. So these expectations are two way. There is an expectation that you would participate in communion. Uh, I know a lot of you folks came from churches that you did communion every week. We only do it four times a year. I think we're moving to six. You expect you to participate in communion. Now uh, I know we do some. Sometimes we'll do, you know, bread and cup. Every time we'll do foot washing. Sometimes, uh, very few, quite honestly. Even the people that have been here 30 years do the foot washing thing. <laughs> so just, just being realistic. You know, if you want to, great. You know, but that's, you know, that's that, that is up to you. Another is, you know, being committed to the church. You know, you know, church. You know, there are some folks that do church hopping. You know, they're they're here and then they're another church and another church. And you know, we want you to be committed. So if you're a member here, you know, show up, you know, <laughs> so, um, be kind of a good idea. Um, so, and that kind of bleeds into the next one there about regular attendance, you know, just actually being, you know, at church on a regular basis. Um, you know, be kind of an awkward conversation. You're like, hey, what church are you a member of? I'm a member of Grace Fellowship. Uh, what's it like? I don't know. I haven't been there in a couple of months. You know, so, <laughs> you know, that would probably not be the best thing. Other expectations are that you'll be giving of your time. There are plenty of um, opportunities for service, and we really, really need that. Uh, reality is we are a church that has one paid employee, Drew. Everything else is volunteer workforce. You know, and there is a uh, a bunch that needs to be done. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. Quite honestly, uh, you know, some of us that have been here for a while um, are kind of worn down. <laughs> so, so, you know, there, there's just a lot of work to be done, and, and we definitely need the help. 
along with that, you know, there's giving of resources, you know, you know, tithing, you know, just giving. So, um, you know, is there ever going to be anyone at this church that uh, looks at, it's like, hey, what's your, what's your pay stub say? I want to know if you're, what you're putting in the plate matches up. That will never happen. If that ever does happen, please tell me because I will go do something about that. Uh, so I will make sure that that never happens. We're expecting that you'll be giving up both time from a service standpoint and you know, however God has blessed you, that you're also helping fund the church You know, because you know, bills need to be paid. And quite honestly, that's how we're able to do the work that God's called us to do, you know, expanding our, our reach. Um, you know, this stuff, you know, unfortunately, in, in our world does cost money. Participating and voting in church meetings. So at least once a year, we will have a church business meeting. Um, and, uh, you know, it's always kind of the, the highlight of the year. No, it's not. You know, it's quite actually quite boring. That is where, you know, kind of we are, you have an opportunity for voting on, uh, you know, uh, deacons, deaconesses. You have an opportunity for, uh, you know, giving feedback on the budget and you know, the, the ways that we're going to be you know, moving forward as a church. You have members that are, I think, you have to be 15 or older to actually do the voting. We really, really want you to be praying for the church and our leadership. Um, reality is we need that. You know, if, if we don't have prayer support, we're not going to be effective. Um, so that is one. Uh, caring for each other. Um, you know, I, I kind of put caring for each other and maintaining unity. We got two separate bullet points for those together. Concern for how we interact as a body is really necessary. Um, and you will maintain that unity because it's really possible for someone to just be an angry person that has, you know, brings division to a group. It doesn't matter if it's a church or, or something else, but you'll, you know, for our body, we want to have unity uh, moving forward. So uh, maintaining that and actually, you know, caring. Then, you know, uh, lastly, you know, just inviting others to church. You know, you know, being part of the Great Commission. You know, we're called to reach out to those around us. Um, so doing that, and you know, I, I know we've had you know a lot of that recently. We actually had a lot, of, you know, a fair amount of growth here recently, which has been really, really you know fun to see. I, I questioned at some point, you know, whether we include the whole thing about you know can membership be revoked? But you know, we we kind of left it in there. Yeah, it can. You know, have we ever done it? I don't think so, ever. Um, you know, but it's you know, uh, you know, there are reasons why. You know, if you are a divisive person, to where you are, you know, bringing disunity. Okay, you might have to address that. You know, if there is open and evident sin that you just refuse to address. You know, we might have to 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 address that. Um, but you know, there's you know very. I, I'll be honest, I don't think that we've ever done that other than clearing out the role from people that just never attend anymore. You know, we'll, we'll do that periodically, you know, but um, so uh, from a requirements and expectations standpoint, that's pretty much it. You know, uh, you know, when I think back, you know, kind of full circle on my own uh, church membership journey, um, uh, was I doing most of these throughout my entire adult life? Yeah, different times, different ones. You know, there were probably areas that I was stronger in than others. There were times that you know I was not serving in in a church. You know, but uh, you know there are times where you know different ones of those that I could have done better in. Um, but uh, you know that's kind of where church membership looks like at our church. <laughs>